I did a show a few weeks ago in Huntington Beach, and uh, this guy booked me to perform in his bar. And right when I got there, he goes, you're on next, you're not dirty, are you? I was like, I am, I'm a dirty comedian. And he goes, you don't use the F word though, right? I was like, I do, but I don't, I don't have to. And he goes, okay, uh, just do me a favor, when you're up there, don't say stanky pussy. <laughs> And I was like, I'll try. <laughs> never said those two words back to back in my entire life. I've never used one of them ever. I don't even know how I would use one of those words. Like, what is it, go before leg? I don't know, I don't even know how I'd use it. I don't even know what a pussy leg is. It's like a weird thing to tell a comedian to do. And like, it was pretty obvious he clearly didn't have a problem with a dirty comedian. He had a problem with a comedian who said stanky pussy a bunch and it bombed. And I've never wanted to see a video so bad in my entire life. I also take it as a challenge to write the funniest stanky pussy joke anybody's ever heard. I'm kicking around the idea of naming the special stanky pussy. I, am. I don't know what I'm gonna call it yet. I don't know, I might not be the right guy for it, but I just, you picture my face like right next to stanky pussy. Like, that's funny, the words, not like the actual thing. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Is that me being clever or not remembering what the next joke is? I don't know. Um, no, I'm staying at a hotel down the street and uh, I love it. I love traveling. I love staying in hotels. The hotel I'm staying in is doing the thing that I hate hotels are doing now. They're putting the shampoo and the conditioner in dispensers against the shower wall. Yeah, I don't like it either. I like to take home the little bottles, right? I got a nice little collection at home. And they're doing, that, that part sucks a little bit. The part that sucks the most is they're taking the hotel lotion and they're putting it in a dispenser against the mirror. And that's the worst, because it makes it real difficult to jack off in the hotel room, okay? Because I don't want to do it in the bathroom, I want to do it on the bed. And now I gotta go to the bathroom and take out like a couple squirts. And you're like, I guess I'll take that back to the bed, which is my walk of shame, I guess, is what that is. And I don't know. I underestimate sometimes. Sometimes I don't get enough. And I'm like, great, I gotta go back for like round two. And I'm like, I don't wanna run out again, so I'm gonna get a little extra this time. Pull a little reserve on your chest. You ever do that move? That's a good move. You come back, finish the job, right? I could do it in the bathroom if I want. It's just that the, me the, the mirror is right there. And you turn around and it's a reflective shower door. And it's like, wherever you look, you're just gonna be making eye contact with yourself. And it's humiliating. You're just like watching yourself in a hotel mirror. Like, what are you doing? Like you checked in eight minutes ago. You know? <laughs> and you got a poop and you still chose to do this first. I did not know you were gonna be so close where I'm just like, very straight, it's, it's just as weird for me, I promise. I just turned 40, and uh, sure, yeah, thanks. You could all do it, some of you maybe have already. Uh, I'm keeping it together pretty good, I think. Like, I work out a lot. Uh, I don't get big, I do Pilates, okay? So I got very flexible. Uh, I did so many Pilates, I had to get a rib put in so I would stop sucking my own dick. So, there you go. Other big thing that happened uh, since my last special is I got married. That was the most woos with no claps I've ever heard in my life. I loved it. All woos. Didn't plan that at all. 120 woos, not a single clap. It was amazing. It was like you had planned it. It was good. I liked it. I got married. I got married like prime pandemic, so we couldn't really have a wedding. We had a Zoom wedding. Uh, I don't know. Did any of you guys go to Zoom weddings? Did you go to one? You didn't go? What? No one went? No one went? Well, that's even sadder because it's very easy to just log on. I have one friend. I sent one friend, the, I, I sent, the, you know, we sent the Zoom in, invite out. I literally had one friend text me and go, sorry, man, I can't make it. And I was like, <laughs> Zoom weddings are a little sad. You know, you don't get free drinks. You, you just log off afterwards. You don't get to see anybody. But my favorite part about a Zoom wedding is you do record it, right? You record the Zoom. And so later you get to watch all your friends and families in the little windows and you get to watch them, watch you get married, which is fun. And you can go through it and you can count exactly how many of your cousins vape. And so I really enjoyed that part a lot.
My wife wanted to know before we got married if there was a specific moment that I knew she was the one I wanted to marry. She was like, was there a specific moment you knew that you wanted to spend the rest of your life with me? And I was like, there was, but you don't want to hear it. <laughs> She's like, I really do. And I'm like, okay, this was it. We were living together before we were married in sin. And we were, uh, we were doing like our nightly bathroom routine, right? She's brushing her teeth. I'm getting out of the shower. I got my towel on. I'm looking around the bathroom. I've never thought this in my life, but it popped into my head. So I just said it. I said, hey, do you think it would be cool someday if you stand in front of the toilet naked and I get up behind you naked, I put my penis between your legs, and you <laughs> held it while I peed, okay? <laughs> I never thought that before. Not even a sexual thing. Not sexual at all. I was just thinking, I was thinking like, I wanna know what it'd be like to have the other parts, right? Aren't you like curious what it would feel like to have the other anatomy? Like what would it feel like to have female anatomy and like to touch it to things and put things in it or whatever? I thought maybe my wife or girlfriend at the time would be like interested to be like, what would it look like to look down and see myself peeing standing up? Or like, what would it feel like to wield the power of a pissing dick, right? And she said, yeah, I think that would be cool. And I was like, that's when I knew I could spend the rest of my life with you. And she was like, I do like that. I just, I wish you hadn't said it during the vows. And, <laughs> be a lot of jokes tonight, but I swear I did that during the vows, and her dad was weirdly into it. I don't know how to feel. Like, I never met him before. I don't know how to feel about it. Anyway. We did it, too. We did it after we were married, and uh, we had a slight, slight change of venue. It was my call. I decided, let's not do it in front of the toilet. Let's do it in the shower, and my reasoning was, like, I've had this for 40 years, and I barely got any control over it. She's not going to, like, crush it on day one, right? So it's more about cleanup. She came in the room the other day and was like, I read in a magazine that you can put yogurt on your vagina to help cure a yeast infection. Have you ever heard that before? You're nodding, have you heard it? Have you tried it? It's no? It's a probiotic, have you tried it? No. No, but you're very for it. it has Yogurt does have probiotics. And internal, okay. You, you seem to know about it. No, you do. Like, I, I, I read, I, 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 you seem to know more about it than she did, than I do. I guess my question to you is, do you mix the Oreos in before or after you <laughs> put it in? And the M&M's. And the M&M's. <laughs> She's got tags. That was nice. That was really good. See, I'm not, try I'm not trying to shut down hecklers. I'll work with you guys, you know? We can have fun together. What a great clip that's gonna be. You only gotta sign a release. You guys already all <laughs> agreed when you walked in, you're gonna be on it. I know he said don't heckle and don't talk to me, but like, please. I'm all alone up here. <laughs> I don't mind. I, mind. I don't care. As long as it's not rude, you can talk to me all you want. I don't know. If I ask something, did you have a question? <laughs> no? All right. My wife was in a neck brace for a lot of the pandemic. And um, I didn't do it. It was like, yeah, nothing to do with me. She, uh, she got in a few car accidents and she had to get like a disc replaced in her neck. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's a bad driver, okay? She's a bad driver. She's a bad driver. I'm sorry. She probably will not be happy that I said that. I just, on purpose, I was going to go, she's a bad driver. She had to get a thing. But instead, I said, she'd been in a couple of car accidents and that didn't get a laugh. And then I said the bad driver thing and they laughed. So I'm sorry. But that was, it got a bigger laugh. Okay. She got disc replaced in her back. And this was also over the pandemic, so I couldn't, they wouldn't let me wait in the waiting room. I had to wait for a nurse to call me. And so a nurse called me and she was like, she's up, uh, you can come get her. And I was like, how'd she do? And the nurse was like, she did real well. She's a little groggy. She asked if anybody drew any dicks on her forehead. <laughs> and I was like, that's my girl. Like, that is, that's my wife. We both went to party schools. You, you fall asleep before midnight in my house. You are getting a dick drawn on your forehead. So that's her. All right. They let me go pick her up. And uh, they gave me her discharge papers, which were a lot less gross than they sound. And... Um, <laughs> Hell yeah, slow burn, just like a discharge, all right. 
I brought her home, and I guess my question to you is, have any of you ever watched a movie with somebody wearing a neck brace? It's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. We were watching some action movie, we're sitting on the couch, we got like our TV mounted up here, and like every time there's like a big action sequence or an explosion or something, I'm looking over at her, and she's just like, you know, like, huh, huh, huh. and I'm like laughing my ass off, and the movie ended, and she's like, that was great, what do you want to do now? And I'm like, I don't know, can we flip to a ping pong match, tennis tournament, anything to keep this going forever? Ever. We watched everything. We watched everything. I'm sure everybody watched everything the last couple years, but there's a trope in, there's a trope in TV and movies I see all the time that I don't like, and I'm sure you've all seen it. There'll be like a woman eating a, that's it. There's like a woman. <laughs> in television, no, that was, I'm sorry that I said that. Um, There'll be like a woman eating a banana, right? And then there'll be like a creepy guy around the corner or like a bunch of creepy dudes like watching this woman eat a banana like it's the hottest thing they've ever seen. And I get it, like a banana is phallic, okay? But what's the fantasy watching a woman eat a banana? You're like, oh yeah, like I wish that was me. I wish she would take mine and rip the skin down all the sides, bite off the tip. Maybe if I'm real lucky, she'll cut off the rest and put it on her cereal. Ooh, maybe she'll wait till it turns black, put it in the freezer, and then bake it into a bread. That's my sexual fantasy. There is a, there, I, have no, I don't know if any of you saw this. There was an article in the New York Post a few years ago that was like my favorite article of all time. It was called, Doctors Are Begging Men to Stop Masturbating with Banana Peels. Did anybody see that? <laughs> begging men. Not just like, you guys gotta stop. Please stop. It was like, please stop masturbating with banana peels. And I read the whole article. Uh, and they never said how the men get the banana peels up their asses. I still have no idea. And that's it for that joke. Thank you. I was in New York a few weeks ago and uh, it rained the whole time I was there. The first thing I had to do in New York was like dip into a bodega and get like a cheap $4 umbrella, you know? And I was walking in Brooklyn in the neighborhood I was staying in. And I don't know if it's because I live in LA and just haven't held an umbrella in a long time or it was extra slippery or extra wet or whatever, but a gust of wind came and I just lost it. It was just like <laughs> up in the air. And I turned around just in time to see it land in a baby's stroller, okay? The baby's fine. I promise you the baby's fine, but the mom was mad. She, she was like, hey! And I was like, I'm sorry. And she goes, you threw your umbrella at my baby. And I was like, I didn't throw it at your baby. Have you ever tried to throw an um, Have you ever tried to throw an open umbrella? Like open against the way that it's open, like facing the other direction? Like for me to accurately be able, the skill level, the skill level, the practice I would have had to put into it, the hatred towards her specific baby for me to land that in the stroller, her second reaction should have been, my baby, her first reaction should have been, that was incredible. You have to show me how you did that. That was amazing. When I was in New York, my friend took me to uh, an adult club. Like, it, it was not a strip club. It was just like an adult entertainment club. And I saw the best show I've ever seen in my life. The first act comes up, and he's just like this completely naked, jacked man, okay? And he gets up, that's not why it was great. But like, whatever, it was, it was still, I don't know, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll watch anything. But um, uh, ripped, jacked, beautiful naked man is just like standing in a kiddie pool, okay? And we're like, what is this? And then water starts cascading from the ceiling, all right? And then he, music's playing and he takes this like soap and shampoo that was in the kiddie pool and just starts taking a shower. And I was like, man, I wish I thought of that. Like, it was awesome. <laughs> it was so good. He killed, he got so clean. He got, it was, that's how you do well when that's your act. Um, and then he just like finished taking a shower, rinsed off and was like, good night. And we were like, that was all right. Never seen anything like that before. It was very impressive. Second act comes up and it's this beautiful naked woman. Okay, no kiddie pool. We're like, what's this gonna be? All of a sudden music starts playing and she bends over and starts pulling like a long piece of fabric out of her ass, okay? And I was like, I did think of that, so come on. Like, this is, that was my idea. I just didn't get around to it yet. 
getting a good shot of this. It's like, a, it's like a, it's a, it's a weird adult clown. I don't know. Classic. She starts pulling this long piece of fabric out of her ass, and we're like, well, and then she, she just unwrinkles it, and it's a shirt, okay? She pulled a shirt out of her ass. And then she pulled two more small pieces of fabric out, and they were socks. And then she pulled two more out, and they're like little fancy gloves. Then she pulled another real long piece out, and it was like these stretchy pants, okay? She pulled an entire wardrobe out of her ass and dressed herself in front of all of us, and then was just like, good night, New York. And we were like, has anyone ever seen anything like that? That was unreal, it was awesome. All I could think was when I decided to do comedy, I was like so not ready to tell my parents what I was doing. I was like so afraid to tell my friends and family like what I was trying to do until I was established, you know? So I, like, what is she telling her parents? Like, what is she telling her family, <laughs> right? Her dad calls, it's like, Tiffany, how's it going in New York? She's like, pretty good. You working? Yeah, what are you doing? Uh, I work in storage. That's what I would say. <laughs> that's, that's how I would put it. After the show, we went outside and all the performers are just like, you know, hanging out, clothed, uh, you know, <laughs> hanging out against the building. And the woman who was on stage had the biggest purse I have ever seen in my life. And I'm just like, why? You know, like if I had her skill set, I wouldn't carry a purse, I wouldn't carry a backpack, fanny pack, I wouldn't even carry a wallet. All I'd be doing is going to the movies with my friends and being like, we're going to the drugstore first. Who wants what? And then when you're in the movie, you're like, who got the Starburst? Kevin, who got the Twizzlers? Who got the Lucy Raisinets? Nobody, ah oh, shit, it happened again, you know? I got accused of stealing a joke. Oh, welcome back. No, you're totally fine. Welcome back. But you don't have a drink, so must have been a pee pee or a poo poo. <laughs> so what? Definitely. Definitely. Sure. I would say definitely too. Yeah. <laughs> I got accused of stealing a joke, and I, that's like the worst thing a comedian can do, right? Besides, like, Cosby stuff or whatever. But um, it's the worst thing I'm gonna get accused of doing ever. Uh, this is like, we all put our videos online, you know? I put my videos up on Instagram or whatever. And here's the thing if you're gonna accuse a comedian of stealing a joke, back it up, right? Don't just be like, I think I've seen this somewhere. Like, be like, where did you see it? And this guy did it right. He sent me a message on Instagram and he goes, You stole this joke from this comedian and he sent me a video of the joke and I watched it and I have to admit, it was word for word. It was the exact same joke. And I had to write back, I had to go, that's me. That's me telling my joke. I'm wearing a different shirt, dude. Like, and then he blocked me and I was like, how did he still win? It's so frustrating fighting with people on the internet. Did you? No. Wow. You gotten that before? No. <laughs> fucking, are you kidding me? It's crazy. No, it's not an insult. I am, you know, I don't know. I just, that was nice. They put one in the front row, you know? They, but they tricked me, as Jews tend to do. I think the most embarrassing thing I can tell you is that from age 15 to 20, I had shoulder length dreadlocks, okay? I know, I'm sorry. I didn't know, I didn't know what cultural appropriation was back then. I just thought the band Corn was really cool, all right? That's it. When my friends find out I had dreads, they always wanna know, did I get laid? And the answer is yes, but it wasn't pretty, okay? <laughs> Every woman I've dated in my adult life has all been like, if I knew you and you had dreads, I would have been so into you. And I'm like, no, you wouldn't have. I've been the same guy the whole time, and I can tell you firsthand that generally, the only women who are into white guys with dreads are white women with worse dreads than the guy, okay? <laughs> and that's who I lost my virginity to, a white woman with dreadlocks. It was just like two avatars linking <laughs> Up. It was awful. And so here's that story. We're going to do a story of losing my virginity in Athens, Georgia. I went to UGA. Athens, did you guys go there? No. He did. <laughs> it's 
So down, there's a there's a 24-hour diner in downtown Athens, right? The bars close at two, so everybody always goes to the diner after the bars close. And uh, I went in with some friends one night, and the next day, my buddy Joe called me. Joe was a line cook at the diner, and he goes, one of the waitresses saw you last night and thought you were cute. She gave me her number to give to you. Joe knew I was a virgin. He goes, if you call her, she will sleep with you. Do you want her number? And sight unseen, I said, yeah. <laughs> and so I called her and she goes, what are you doing tonight? And I was like, I'm not doing anything. And she goes, REM is playing a secret show. This is like a thing that would happen in Athens. REM would play secret shows for like a few hundred people before they'd go do their like big stadium shows. Uh, she's like, REM is playing a secret show. Let's go get some drinks and pregame and then we'll go CREM and I was like awesome and so we met in downtown Athens and we're like walking around a little bit seeing if we get along we get along great and she goes let's go get some beers and I'm like great but I'm 18 so I go I got money but I can't buy it and she goes that's okay I'm 25 and I immediately got a boner that was the <laughs> hottest thing I'd ever heard in my life up until that point and so we get in her pickup truck and we go, to, I know, I know, it's Georgia. We get in her big ass monster pickup truck and we go to the liquor store and I'm sitting in the passenger seat with my window down and she goes in. She goes like in the indoor while through the outdoor at the same time so they don't see each other, Mike Mills from REM comes out. And I'm like, oh my God. And I'm sitting in the passenger seat and with my window down and he gets into the car right next to me and I yell out the window, I go, hey Mike. And he's like, huh? And I go, see you at the show tonight. And he's like, what? And then he drove off and I was like, I. Met Mike Mills. Like, I was so excited about it. <laughs> she gets back in the car with the beers and we go to her apartment. Um, I'm 18 at the time. All my friends are in the dorms. I don't have any friends with apartments, so I'm just like blown away by everything. I'm like, this is incredible. Like, you got a couch. Like, this is unreal, you know? <laughs> so we start drinking the beers on the couch and like 45 minutes later, Three beers each later, we are annihilated, okay? And we're getting along great, and she disappears in her room for like 15 minutes. I'm like, I don't know what to do. And then Joe calls me, and he's like, how's it going over there? I'm like, it's going great, but she's been in her room for like 20 minutes. I don't know what to do. Joe's like, she wants you to go in there and get her. I was like, oh, okay. So I do the thing where like, you, I go to her bedroom door, I do the thing like where you knock and open it at the same time, you know, which is dumb, because why knock if you're not gonna wait for a response? <laughs> but she's just in there, sitting on the bed, having a drink, listening to music. And she's like, come sit on the bed with me. And so I did, and Joe must have told her my situation ahead of time, because she goes, so, I've never taken anybody's virginity before. And I can't even take credit for what I said, because I was so drunk, but I said, you're about to? <laughs> I still don't know if that's the coolest or lamest thing a virgin has ever said, but that's what came out and it worked because we're like making out immediately and clothes are flying off and Pixie's wave of mutilation is playing. And I'm like, that's a weird song to lose your virginity to, but let's do it. And then I pull out the, I pull out the wallet condom I had had in there for like four years. It's like already like, it's like crumbled up and like open kind of with like a little bit of brown on the top of it. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Bam, I got it on like no problem. And I was like, I did it. And she's like, congratulations. And I'm like, that was, I was nervous about that you know that was a big moment for me and it started we started with me trying to be on top okay and I say trying because I was having trouble finding it okay I was never a big porn guy and the only sex I had seen at that point was like movie sex where the guy's just like so much more on top that like I didn't know how underneath everything was, okay? <laughs> I know now, I know now exactly where it is, okay? But at the time, I'm just like poking around belly button and stuff, and I'm just like, oh, you're so tight. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> she was like, maybe we should try something else. And I was like, yeah, maybe you should turn around. And she was like, turn around? I'm like, yeah, you know, doggy style. And she's like, you're not ready for that. And I was like, that's fair, that's right. She goes, how about you lay on your back? And I did, and I loved that. Um, I still love that, that's my favorite. 
also, I loved laying in my big old pile of dreads. I miss them. I still think about them. I get phantom dreads sometimes. I, there was one here I loved. I just wanna, I wanna roll it in my palm. That's what I wanna do. Dreadward Norton, that's what I named him. <laughs> Fight Club was big. So I'm on my back, and uh, she's, like, she's like, you know, get on your back. And I'm like, all right, I'm on my back. And I'm like, I love that. And then she does a thing. She just like climbs up, up, uh, in. And I'm like, wow, you've done this before, right? Like, it was like way easy. And uh, we're doing it for like a second before I hear a knock on the door, okay? And I look over and there's just this dude's face in the doorway and I'm just like, why knock if you're not gonna wait for a response? <laughs> And it turned out she had a roommate who got home while we were in there. I didn't know. And he's mad. He's like, there's beer bottles all over the living room. And she's like, I'll get them tomorrow. And I'm like, it's my first time. And he goes, congratulations. And I'm like, everybody here is so nice. <laughs> so he leaves, closes the door, and we go back to doing it. Okay? And here's guys early on especially are so afraid they're going to finish quickly. Right? Guys are so afraid they're just going to, like, finish upon entry and this was like the complete opposite i knew all i knew right away i was never gonna finish it was just like a combination of drinking and anxiety and the condom and it's just going for so long and it's starting to hurt and i'm like this sucks like it hurts i'm not gonna finish like what am i a girl you know and like <laughs> And like, it's going so long that like, I can feel myself chafing, you know? And then like, the chafing turned into like, I'm bleeding. Like, I can feel that I'm bleeding. And this thing, we both have, uh, we both have dreads. We both have those like, big plugs in our ears. She has like, new tattoos on her hands and forearms. And I can see that they are bleeding. And I'm just like, I'm literally like, she's bleeding, I'm bleeding. Like, I'm getting AIDS. I was just like, <laughs> while I was losing my virginity, I'm just thinking, I'm getting AIDS. Like, I, we're of the sex ed generation where we were pulled out of class in seventh grade to show like slideshows of like cauliflowers growing out of penises and stuff. And like, you know, Magic Johnson, when I was like nine years old, came out with HIV. And at the time, I mean, even, even like by the time this was happening, I'm like, I don't, I'm not getting Magic Johnson AIDS, like rich person AIDS, where in 20 years I'm the most healthy man in America. This is like poor person AIDS. I'm gonna die from this. And I'm like freaking out. And I can tell it, you know, she can see that I'm not doing great. And she was like, do you wanna stop? And I was like, yes, please. She was like, do you want me to drive you back to your dorm? And I was like, yes, ma'am. So she's driving me back to my dorm and I'm just like, I guess I'm not being invited to sleep over, you know? She drops me off in my dorm and I'm just like, I gotta take a shower. I gotta get in the shower. And so I go up to my floor. We have like the bathrooms that the whole floor shares. And so I go in the shower room, it's like three in the morning, nobody's there. And as soon as the hot water hit me, it was just like, ouch. It stung so bad that I was like, I gotta go to the emergency room. <laughs> So the night I lost my virginity, I drove myself to the emergency room. I went right up to the nurse, and she was like, what can I do for you? And I was like, I have AIDS. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. If you tell them you have AIDS in the emergency room, you're just like in there with a doctor in like a second. You skip the line, okay? <laughs> AIDS is the Disney fast pass. <laughs> in the emergency room. And so I'm in there like two minutes later with a doctor and a clipboard and he's like, so, how long have you been HIV positive? And I'm like, today. He's like, okay. How long have you been sexually active? I'm like, also today. And like, like light went off, he immediately knew. He's like, that's not how it works. You don't just like instantaneously get an STD. And I was like, you don't understand, man. Like, she had tattoos, okay? I was like, just look at it, please. It was the first time in my life I'd ever begged anybody to look at my red penis, okay? Not the last, but the first. And he's like, okay, just drop your pants. And I did, and he looked at it, and he goes, dude, sometimes they just look weird. And then he sent me home with a Benadryl, and that cost me $300, okay? <laughs> Next day, Joe called me. And he goes, how'd it go last night? And I was like, pretty good, you know? Like, I didn't tell him about the emergency room. I was like, it went pretty good. The only thing that sucks is we never made it to the REM show. 
And he was like, oh, what REM show? And I was like, REM was playing a secret show at the Georgia Theater. We were going to go, but we never made it. And he goes, I was at the Georgia Theater last night. It was just my friend's band playing. REM wasn't there. And that's when I found out that there was never an REM show. She lied to me to get me to sleep with her, which is insane, because you don't have to lie to an 18-year-old dude virgin to get them to sleep with you. You can just be like, hey, let's get a drink and I'll sleep with you, or let's watch a movie and I'll sleep with you, or let's, I'll sleep with you. I needed nothing, I didn't need anything. And I made a fool out of myself in front of Mike Mills from REM. I'm like, see you at the show tonight. He's like, see you at the show. Another fucking idiot fan with the same joke I hear every time. But Joe was like, you'll be able to see REM again, but you lost your virginity. You kind of feel good about that. And I was like, okay, I do. I feel awesome about that. Uh, I'm glad to have that off my back, you know. Um, and looking back on it, I can say it was a pretty great experience, you know. If I had one complaint, really, about the whole thing, it's that she did have a stanky pussy. <laughs> cool enough to pull that off. I wasn't. No, 20 more minutes. Sorry about that. I'll pay for this. If there's a dent, I'll pay for it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That actually did feel pretty cool, to be honest. Man. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to be a total diva right now, and I'm sorry, but my little, my little water thing is empty. I don't know if there's any. I don't want to ask an audience member. Could you, could you, well, want me to come? I'll just, I'll, I'll, just a water, please. Oh, thank you. Wow, thank you. Oh, it, I'm, this sucks so bad, and you're so nice. It has to be in one of these cups because of the continuity of beauty. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I'm like, sorry, you gotta go all the way back there. Yeah, no, that one's on me. I'll take it. I won't edit it out either. I'm an idiot, all right? I'm an idiot, which, you know what? Says more about you guys than it does about me because you fucking paid to watch an idiot. Fuck you. No, not fuck you. Thank you for being here. I'm so that's why I did it in DC. Smart audiences <laughs> who also like dumb stuff. You're my people. I like you. Um, I'm speaking of smart audiences who like dumb stuff, I'm gonna do this guitar stuff in a second. That's how we're gonna, that's how we're gonna end the show. But uh, I got one magic trick. Do you guys wanna see a magic trick? Yeah. <laughs> We've all, everyone's seen the David Blaine trick where he, where he bites the quarter, like in half? He like bites a quarter in half. It's amazing, and then he like spits it back in. So this is a, this is a twist on a classic, okay? During the really quiet part, I heard someone say, I don't buy it. <laughs> Which is the funniest thing. You don't? You don't think I'm really magic up here? You didn't buy the part where I bit it. The part where it came out of my ass and came back together, though. You buy that part, though, right? <laughs> All right, let's do this. Wow, so nice. Thank you. Um, I know a lot of people, a lot of people see a comedian pick up a guitar and you're like, this is not going to be good. And I get that. I totally get that. I want you to know in college, I was in a Smashing Pumpkins cover band. Okay. <laughs> we were called Squishing Squashes. This is going to be great. <laughs> you're in good hands. This is in Atlanta. This is in Atlanta. This is like, I'm old now. We're, this is MySpace days. We made a, we made a MySpace for this, for the cover band. And within like a day, we had like 40,000 friends just because Sp Smashing Pumpkins was in the name. And all the local Atlanta radio stations had us playing these like huge beer festivals and stuff. We're like 20 years old playing in front of like 3,000 people. And this one guy, 
used to get so drunk and come to all of our shows. He busted into our dressing room once, and he was like, I just want you guys to know you're my favorite band. And I was like, that is really nice, but if you like us, there's another band you really got to check out. So. You hear that okay? All right. So I've been doing comedy for about 17 years, and I was never doing musical comedy until uh, I got married and I wanted to write a song for my wife to sing at the wedding. I thought it'd be fun to do like a cute, funny, romantic song, you know? So do you guys want to hear the song I sang for my wife? Uh, awesome. I can't sing, but I did it for her and I thought she'd like it, so here we go. This is a song I sang uh, for my wife at our wedding. Tonight's the night, we do it in the butt. What do we got to lose? Yeah! And it went great, it really did. It went great. Her dad's all dancing on a picnic table and stuff. It was fun. Uh, and she loved it. And now I feel like the whole family keeps talking about it where now I feel pressure that every year I gotta do a new song for my wife. And so we just had her one year anniversary. And uh, sure, yeah. Yes, it was, marriage is so hard. Oh, are you two married right here? How long have you guys been married? <laughs> yeah, marriage sounds awesome. Two years? Okay. Yeah. It's two years. They said two years. Have you tried the penis between the legs thing? Did you do it? Have you tried the penis between the legs thing? You gotta do it. It's a great bonding. No? Oh, yeah. Yeah, God forbid you put your penis between your wife's legs. Trust me, that two years is gonna fly by way faster if you're doing fun stuff like that. Bye. Uh, oh, you gotta hear the next part though. Oh, you gotta go, okay, bathroom, right? She's getting you another drink? That's very nice. I'll wait till she gets back. Wait till she gets back. Wait till she gets back because it's the second half of the same joke. So I gotta do. She gets so embarrassed? Why would you tell me that? You think that's gonna make me not want to embarrass her? She is so embarrassed, please don't pick on her with all the cameras and you're trying to be funny. Great, what's her name? What's her name? If you don't tell me your name, we're gonna make up a more embarrassing name than probably what her real name is. Heidi. Heidi? Yes. Okay, great, when she gets... That's my mom. That's your mom? Yeah, that's my mom. Oh, then I definitely don't want to do anything embarrassing. Have you two tried the penis between the legs? Thing? I don't know. I don't know what parts anybody has, and I don't care, to tell you the truth. Everybody have fun. Although the mother-daughter thing's not appropriate. <laughs> but other than that, live your life, you know? Here, we'll do a couple uh, quick one-liners before she gets back, okay? <laughs> anybody, wearing, anybody wearing army pants? Fatigues? Anybody got them on? No? That's cool. It's fine. I, I can't pull them off anyway. Every time I put on army pants, I always I end up getting camo toe. <laughs> it's actually pretty, uh, what day is it? Saturday? I'm never even out on a Saturday. It's like rare that I can even go out on a Saturday. You know what, you, you just wanna know what I'm normally doing on a Saturday? Yeah. <laughs> this is a joke that I'm trying to set up, so we'll have a... <laughs> It's rare, it's rare that I'm ever even out on a Saturday. You guys wanna know what I'm normally doing on a Saturday? Yeah. Knitting with my grandma, thank you. There you go. How did you guys hear the show? What? How did you end up at the show tonight? It's my birthday. It's your birthday? It's my birthday. That's awesome. How, yeah, that's great. Uh, uh, how, what, what birthday is it, if, if I do, you don't mind me asking. 27, great. You look wonderful for 27. I got nothing mean to and say to you. Divorced. And freshly divorced. Wow. Yeah. That makes sense because if you're 27, you clearly got married too early. Like there's no question about that. I'm sorry to you guys, but you know what? You look older than 27, but not bad. You don't look bad. You're just clearly older than 27. Okay, that's good. All right, well, you know what? We can't wait for her to come back because she clearly has diarrhea and... I don't want to embarrass your mom. I don't want to embarrass her. No, no, I hope this doesn't end up on Netflix. Oh, uh, Netflix is not buying this. <laughs> very nice, very nice of you. I, I would love it. 
I really just had to have an honest moment with myself right there. <laughs> and be like, I know. I also... <laughs> I'm sorry, but if it came down to like, if Netflix was like, we'll buy it, but we have to put Heidi in there, I'm like, fuck it, Heidi's going in. But like, it's just it's not likely. I'd <laughs> be lucky if we get fucking Peacock on this one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Things going on Quibi. <laughs> Do you guys want to hear the song I sang for my wife on our one year anniversary? Yeah. It went like this, it went like this, it went, uh. Remember the night we did it in the butt. This time let's do your butt. And yeah, dude, one year anniversary, you guys know way better than the wedding night. I think your mom ditched you on your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's a whole song. All right, this song is about Hitler's penis, okay? And uh, I know, that's a lot. That's a lot to take in right now. This is, oh, is Heidi back? Is that Heidi? No, fuck, man, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. This song is about Hitler's penis. Okay, I don't know how many of you follow the news, but every, that's Heidi, right? Yes. All right, Heidi's back. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Check out, what was your name, I'm sorry? Melissa, oh, Heidi, come back and sit next to her daughter. You two have a fun time. Birthday. Happy birthday, drink to you. We know you were just out there getting a drink and, uh, and, and looking incredible and having fun. So welcome back to the show. Check me out on CISO. All right. Um, <laughs> This next song is about Hitler's penis, all right? I don't know how many of you follow the news, but every few years, uh, the, the real medical records from Hitler's doctor kind of like make it around the internet, and he had this really weird penis, and I was reading about it, and I'm like, I gotta write a song about it, and so I did. I hope you like it. This song is called Hitler's Dick, AKA Mein Kockumpf, okay? Hope you like it. <laughs> I would never dick shame anyone cool. Big dick, small dicks can all be useful tools. And you can find love even if you're not well hung. Have a good personality and learn how to use your tongue. And if Hitler had been good, I wouldn't say shit. But since we all know what he did, let's talk about his little dick. And just so you know, none of this is fiction. It's all well documented by Hitler's real physician. That's just a setup, baby. Here we go. Hitler's tiny dong was half an inch long, and it was put together all the way wrong. Its appearance in the dark, maybe he could hide, but not that his pee came out on the underside. Yeah, Hitler had a fucked up dick, a deformed dick, an abnormal dick, and everything I'm telling you would make him sad, but it makes me glad to tell you what he had. He had a medical condition called hypospadias, and I would never make fun of anybody for something like that, okay? I would never make fun of anybody for having a medical condition, all right? Unless you're a Nazi piece of shit. I read a bunch of articles about Hitler's PP, and every single one of them gave me the heebie-jeebies, and I feel like this next part would have embarrassed him the most, which is why it's so great. I read it in the Washington Post. Sure, yeah, uh, I want, I, comedians hate it when you're on your phones during our sets. Obviously, we want you paying attention to the show, but I want you so badly to know that what I'm telling you about Hitler's penis is real. If you feel like pulling out your phones and Googling Hitler penis Washington Post, it will not bother me at all, okay? All right, feel free. This is what I learned in the article. Most of his penis is noticed by his collars Was fused to his body, making it seem even smaller And if that wasn't enough, you'll never guess what What? Hitler, all you didn't know to do it It's fine, it's fine It's a new song, it's gonna be on the special Once it comes out, maybe people will know But we'll, we'll do it again so everybody can get it here together, okay? Everybody ready? Alright, here we go 
And if that wasn't enough, you'll never guess what Black. Hitler also had an undescended nut. Yeah, Hitler's tiny prick was a centimeter thick. I switched to metric because Germany. And it just kind of hung there like a little candle wick. But just because your dick is weird doesn't mean your life is lost. It especially doesn't mean you get to start a whole Holocaust Hitler. A fucked up dick, a deformed dick, an abnormal dick. And you won't believe me, you'll think I'm dreaming to increase his sex drive. He was injected with bull semen. All right, I know. Gross, right? If you read the article, the last line of the article is about how he goes to a doctor and says, hey, you see that stuff shooting out of the bull's cock? I want you to shoot that into mine cock. And that's where I got a title from, and then the rest wrote itself, basically. So here we go. Let's bring it home. I guess the moral of the story here is if your dick is strange, learn to use what you got. Don't be deranged. The solution is never to make all the Jews dead. Get yourself a big German sports car instead. Thank you. All right. Very nice, everybody. My favorite part, by the way, of the whole Hitler story is that I, I just love that he was walking around with a micro penis like fused to his leg with pee dribbling down the bottom of it. Just being like, we have the best genes. I love that. That's so funny to me. Oh, I did, a, uh, I did the thing that Jews are not supposed to do, which is I got a tattoo. Okay, I'll show you. I'll just show you. Is it on your butt? Yeah, yeah, no, it's not on my butt. Do we have any Jews here? Wow. Wow. Are you? Jeez Louise, thank you very much for, you were just right in front of me the whole time. You didn't speak up when I said to this guy either. What did you think? What did you think when, when you saw him? Yeah, yeah, I thought so too. No, it's not an offensive thing. Look, two very attractive people right here, you know, we just, Judar was off. I don't know what happened, but that's whatever. Do you have any tattoos? You don't. Um, okay, well, we'll get, okay, we'll get into the Jew thing for a second. So first, my first reason for not getting a tattoo has, uh, my first reason for being afraid to get a tattoo has nothing to do with being Jewish. Um, you're just like, you're a, okay, I guess that is very Jewy. I didn't even, that was not even on purpose. It's yeah. <laughs> the most Jewy thing I could have done. Uh, uh, put that there. Um, so for, ta like, my big fear, my whole life, I got my first tattoo at 40, okay? Because I was just afraid my whole life, like, what's it gonna look like when you get older, you know? And so I finally decided at 40, I was like, I'll just get grapes. Cause I figured worst case scenario, it turns into raisins, right? So that's where that came from, all right? It's kind of Jewy too, I didn't even mean it to be, but if I just put Manischewitz right there, like it would be a super Jewy tattoo. The thing with, okay, so as a Jew without tattoos, do you want a tattoo or are you just like, Never really wanted one. But you know, you know why Jews are not supposed to get tattoos? What is that? Because you can't get buried with your family. Can't get buried with your family in a Jewish cemetery. Right, that's the thing. You're not supposed to be able to be buried in a Jewish cemetery. So I went on a Reddit board, okay? Which is what I call the news. And um, <laughs> apparently uh, Jewish cemeteries are burying people with tattoos. What they're doing is they'll just like cut off the limb or they'll cut out the tattoo, you know, like as God intended, right? Like, <laughs> It's crazy, it's a religious loophole. Uh, I love religious loopholes so much. We all know one too. Everyone grew up with a Catholic girl, right? Who was like, I will not have sex before I'm married, but then they'd still do mouth and butt stuff, right? Like we all know a Catholic girl that did that, which I, that's a religious poop hole, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> just thought of that. And, uh, yeah, got it. Um, I love that, I love that. Like if you believe in God and heaven, like you go up to heaven and God's like, sorry, can't get through the pearly gates. You did premarital sex. And she's like, no, I didn't. I just did anal and oral. And then God's like, oh, another one. <laughs> they tricked us again. We gotta rewrite that verse or whatever. They keep coming in, these Catholic girls. They're loose buttholes. <laughs> Um, so anyway, before I found that out, I wrote a song about how I feel about not being able to be buried in a Jewish cemetery, okay? And it goes like this. It goes, 
Throw me in a volcano, bury me in the backyard. Sell me to a necro, if that makes his dick hard. Feed me to the piranhas, let me sink into the sea. Cook me up for a cannibal, if he likes Jew meat. I don't care if I'm not buried in a Jewish cemetery. I'll be dead and I won't care, so desecrate my body. <laughs> Bring that back to Hebrew school. <laughs> you guys are fucking awesome. I feel awesome up here. I feel so good. Uh, I woke up feeling so shitty this morning. Uh, it's my fault. I had a seafood salad for dinner last night. <laughs> And I woke up this morning, I had a giant squid mark in my underwear. So. Yeah. 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 The Smashing Pumpkins cover band, okay? This, I started dating a girl through the Smashing Pumpkins cover band. What happened was, this girl, this is what you need to know about. We were a tribute band not just a cover band, okay? So like a step above. We all played the specific, the, the members of the band. And I don't want to tell you who I was because this story is personal. And if it gets around to him, it's like, that's not cool maybe. But I will give you a hint. Uh, I can play guitar, but not sing, okay? And I was the only person in the band not uh, racially appropriate for who I was playing. So if you know anything about them, you can probably figure it out. But. This girl wanted to date me because she dated the real guy in the band, all right? And when I first heard that, I was like, oh, all right. And then I was like, that's actually, that's not cool. That's like, <laughs> that's like being like, I dated Johnny Depp, and now I'm dating the guy who dresses like a pirate on Hollywood Boulevard, <laughs> charging $5 for photos. It's not that cool. But she wanted to date me because she dated him. And, uh, and so we went out a few times, and we had a good time. And uh, this is the other thing you need to know about me. I'm not into butt stuff, okay? It's just not my thing. I know I sang the, the fun little butt song, but that was a jokey song. I'm not into butt stuff. One of the best parts about being married is you find somebody who's into the same stuff as you, right? Like, I'm not prude, I've done it. I did all the butt stuff. I gave it, received it, right? I'm just not into it. Even the tongue up the butt, I don't like it. A lot of guys like to get their butts eaten. For me, felt wet for three days afterwards, no matter, no matter what. Every time I got my butt eaten, three days later, I got a paper towel and a blow dryer and it still just felt like a little wet worm was living in there. I hated it, but I don't have to do it anymore. But this girl wanted me to put it in her butt because the guy from the Smashing Pumpkins put it in her butt and I was like, okay, well that is a perfect circle I need to complete. And that's another clue for you. He was in a band called A Perfect Circle also. All right, so we went out and got some drinks one night and then went back to my apartment and I did it put it in her butt, and I started laughing immediately. And she's like, what's so funny? And I was like, as soon as it went in, I, I thought smashing rumpkins, and it made me laugh. And so she's laughing too, and I'm still like inside her, and like we're both laughing, and she farted on my penis. And all I could think was, today is the greatest day I have ever known. And we cut, because we don't have the rights to that song. My last special, I did a special a few years ago and I wanted to do a bit with the home improvement theme song, right? You know, the like, whatever it is. Right, you know, I want, yeah, sure. I want to do a bit with a home improvement theme, we've got to cut that. I want to do a bit with a home improvement theme song and uh, I asked like the production company and they're like, they reached, they're like, we reached out to ABC and they said, you can use it, but you have to pay $17,500. <laughs> And we were like, oh, all right, that's a dumb joke, but that's a true story. All right, I got one more song for you guys. Uh, I have a younger brother who I love very much. He's wonderful. He got me a gift for my birthday last year. It was a very thoughtful gift, but it turned out to be one of the worst gifts I ever got in my life. Um, it was actually the worst. It was a song about the worst gift I ever got in my life. All right. My 
My brother sent me a honey-baked ham. I opened up the box and I was like, damn, it's like 14 pounds of meat. It came with a brochure. I'm flipping through it all and none of this is kosher, but that's okay. We're not great Jews, but that amount of ham, bro, I got bad news. It's too much ham. Yeah, it was about 14 pounds of ham is an act of aggression. <laughs> Two, three. <laughs> I don't know if you're laughing for the same reason as me. I'm just like, I don't know why I'm counting. Nobody's coming in but me. All right, hang on. Two, three, four. Too much ham. Too much ham. <laughs> It's dumb, but it's fun, right? He got it for me for my December birthday. We've eaten half by May. The rest is all turned gray. The truth of the matter is I'm currently real poor, but me, my wife, and pets don't want to eat it anymore because it's too much ham. I don't want to stand on a podium, but it's way too much ham. Yeah, I heard one over there, that's you. Yeah, dude, you got it. Top half of a one percentile of smartness here. The rest of you though, the participation and the enthusiasm, like, thank you, it was so nice, and the confidence through the roof. But you were, you were very wrong. It makes much more, in retrospect, it makes sense. Sodium podium, like, easy peasy, but like, whatever. I, I thank you for trying and, um, Sing along if you know this part. Two, three, four. Too much ham. Too much ham. All right, one more verse. We'll sludge it up for you. My brother's birthday's coming up and I want to get him back with a present that seems nice but is really an attack. I've been thinking for a week. I think I thought of how I got my brother a whole fucking cow. It'll be too much cow, yeah. The average weight of a cow is about 1,600 pounds and he's gonna have to decide whether to kill it or bring it inside but either way it'll be too much cow two three four too much cow too much cow so bad. Uh, DC, you guys were incredible. Thank you so much for coming out. I really appreciate it. Come take uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. Please welcome your opening comedian, a horse who does stand up. Jokes, yay or nay? Yeah. All right. The bartender told me to break a leg before I got out here. I was like, why? So you can shoot me in the face? <laughs> you know, we're not so different, me and you guys. Some of you guys get jock itch. I get jockey itch. Woo! <laughs> Uh, this one's just a premise. Uh, I walk into a bar. Uh, this one just says, remind everybody that I have a huge horse cock. You guys wanna know 
how I was wrongfully accused of pedophilia? I told my doctor I was feeling a little hoarse. Okay, one more joke and then I gotta go piss like me. Right. Why don't horses eat french fries? Because we prefer tater trots. Thank you very much. May the horse be with you.